Hey everybody, Dr. Robin McKay here and welcome to this week's weather report. It's time to tune in in our actualization zone for the, the non-physical energies that are influencing us this week. And I'm going to talk about, as I always do, just how we can harness these and honor them in order to begin actualizing our greatest hopes, dreams, and heart's desires. If you are watching live, be sure to say hello. If you're watching the replay, let me know so I can come back and say hello. And if you're brand new, if this is the first time you're watching, I'd love to be able to connect with you. So make sure to let me know that too, so we can come back in and greet you properly and give you a proper welcome. So I just, in the actualization zone, asked a question last week on the things that you all wanted to learn more about. And overwhelmingly, what you all said was that you want to learn more about how to activate your intuition. And it makes sense because there are so many people in this community who are very bright, who are very accomplished and have for the most part done most of what they've done using grit, hard work, tenacity, nothing's ever been handed to you for sure. And um, in the background, what's been running for most people who connect with me is their intuition. It just isn't something that necessarily comes to the fore in conversations or in trainings or anything like that professionally, simply because a lot of you come from professions where intuition is sort of, um, what do I want to say? Well, when I, when I was in healthcare, when I was in biotech, what I noticed is that people either didn't believe in it um, or questioned it or rolled their eyes at it or called it woo woo or touchy feely or something like that. And, um, remember Einstein is credited with saying that intuition is a sacred gift and reason is its faithful servant. And we've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And so of course, what I've been assigned to do in my work is to bring intuition back front and center where it belongs to all of you who are intuitive and intelligent. It's just as often that we don't always have the words for it or get it acknowledged in our work simply because of the area that we've chosen to focus our time, attention, and expertise. So let's change that, shall we? You know, intuition is actually the voice of your soul. It's not a way to make decisions, which is oftentimes how it's written about in the research. Instead, intuition is really the voice of your soul. It's the, the deep, quiet, constant inner voice that comes through in four different channels. It can come through just with an intuitive knowing. You just know that you know that you know. It can come in as a vision. You see something. You can see beyond what other people can see. It comes up as a feeling. I just feel things. I call it my spidey sense. Um, and then there's also a, an audience. There's a clear audience. There's just being able to hear words, even full sentences in your inner ear. So one of those is usually most powerful for each of us. Um, you can develop all of them. But all of these link back to a personality feature that I see over and over again in the Neo personality assessments that I give all of the people who come in and work with me privately is a high level of openness to experiences. And openness is a characteristic that is associated with creativity. It's associated with intuition and um, it's highly heritable. So you get it from your family. So you, most likely you'll be able to track back and see where, who was intuitive in my family. Was my mom, was my dad? Where did that come from? And of course, if the people who raised you aren't your genetic relatives, um, certainly that's maybe not known to you, but it can certainly be something that you can be in, be questioning or wondering about anyway. Okay, so one of the best ways to get in touch with your intuition is to, first of all, this is the first thing we're going to talk about this week, is to pay attention to what you're feeling. Now, your emotions are not your intuition. So if you're feeling frustrated, anxious, worried, scared, mad, sad, whatever it is, those are, those are your emotions. 
they um, articulate first in the brain and then you feel them in the body. That's why they're called feelings. But your emotions are like the top level, like the, the surface of an ocean where all the waves are. The intuition sits underneath the emotions. So sometimes people get afraid to make intuitive decisions because they're afraid they're going to be um, impulsive. But impulsivity is actually related to your nervous system, how your nervous system is wired. So if you've got kind of a squirrely nervous system where you run red hot a lot of times, if you've got a short temper, if you typically are anxious or maybe run a little bit more depressed than most people, um, you might you might consider that your intuition is actually lodged in those emotions and it's not actually the case. So we wanna make sure our emotions are cleared out and mm, what's the word I'm looking for here? That you've addressed the emotions, that you've felt your feelings and got a, gotten a clear channel, if you will, to read your intuition or to hear your intuition from. So once you have cleared out all of the emotions, either by walking some kind of movement drinking lots of water, making sure your nervous system is soothed first. Then you can tune in to your emotions. And so one of the best ways that I love to tune, sorry, then you can tune into your intuition. And one of the best ways I love to do that, especially when we're just getting started, is to use decks of cards because these card decks are actually ways that our intuition can speak to us. So this week, for I'm just going to tune into our collective energies here in the actualization zone. And let's see what we have for the first one. So the first card that we are looking at today is a sacred union. And I think it's interesting. Isn't it beautiful? Sacred union card. This is the um, Rebecca Campbell Rose Oracle deck. Um, and this is paying attention to your beloved inside of you. So a sacred union, you could think of that between your intellect and your intuition. I say a lot of times I build the bridge between the head and the heart. And the, the heart is actually the, the center of the soul. And it's where the intuition speaks. So the heart is not particularly um, sentimental, actually. Those are our emotions. But the heart, when it's clear will give you a very clear read on what's going on in your environment, will give you very clear direction on where the next steps are for you to take. So this week it's tuning in to the heart, which is the beloved internally. Tune into your heart, not what you're feeling. Feel, paying attention to what you're feeling is important, but beyond what's underneath the feeling. What's underneath the feeling? Tuning into your heart and listening there. So that's number one, tune into your heart. Um, let's see. Yeah, and this one is cool too. This one goes right along with it. This is um, the codes for the seeds, codes of the seeds. The blueprint is within you. What I wanna get at with this card in particular is that when you tune into your heart, you're no longer looking outside of yourself for advice you're no longer looking outside of yourself for what to do next. And you're no longer waiting for somebody to tell you what to do next. That's not to say that we don't require advisors to get different people's perspectives. Certainly, I do that all the time with my the clients who work with me privately. I give them perspective, insight. But ultimately, it's tuning into your own self. It's tuning into that blueprint inside of you for the, the true north, for those directions that are inside of you. And the, one of the best ways to do, to do that, put your hand on your heart, take a couple of breaths. And here's the trick. If you really want to start paying attention to your intuition, your intuition doesn't give you the answer right away. Your intuition is going to nudge you. It might talk to you in pictures. It might talk to you in synchronicities and serendipities, like signs. And then your job is to just follow the sign, follow the synchronicity, follow the serendipity, take action on those 
experience it experiences that come in as a result of you paying attention. The challenge is, especially when you're very, very bright, is that you want to make sense of it and you want to know all the steps and you want to know how. But intuition doesn't work that way. Our intellects work that way. But if we put the intellect in charge of our intuition, we're doing exactly what Einstein said that we're doing. We're relegating the servant into a higher position. The servant is meant to be of service to the intuition. So when you get a hit, when you get an idea, even just being on this, on this training today, on this weather report today, you might be getting something that stirs up inside of you. So you take action on that, not because it makes logical sense, but because you're gonna see what happens. And you base that, see what happens in curiosity. I wonder what'll happen when. Something always happens. We have to be curious about it, be playful about it. And as I was speaking, my hand actually pulled another card for us. And this one came forward. This is Morning Dew, D-E-W. And this is about having a French, fresh start and a positive outlook. So getting clarity, just getting clarity about what's next. So when you're clearing all the emotions, the frustration, the worry, the fear, and you get clarity, it's like after a rainstorm and the air smells so, so fresh. That's what we're looking for here when it comes to tuning into your intuition. And my intuition says one more card, one more card today. Let's see. So let's talk about this because I know a lot of you have something on your mind, something that you're working on creating, actualizing for yourself, whether it's new, a new position, a new stream of income for your business, new programs that you're starting, new clients that you're calling in, whatever it is for you. Um, and this card, talk about synchronicity and serendipity. This is a, the bud. The bud, it's a real pretty card. Whoops, there we go. And the bud is about potential promise and a signal that it's about to happen. It's about to happen. So we get so impatient, don't we, with our creations. We get so impatient with our, with our push, with the push energy with the grit it out and make things happen and bulldoze it and, and muscle our way through it. But you know, in nature, it takes time to, for the bud to open. I have a pomegranate tree in my backyard and I've been watching these little pomegranates forming. You know, first they were this big, first, first the tree looked dead in the winter. It looked absolutely dead. And then the, the leaves started coming through and now the leaves are in full foliage. And now the little pomegranates are, are starting to appear. And they're about, I don't know, this big or so, and they're not ready yet. And if I got impatient with it, what do you do with a pomegranate that isn't ready to eat yet? You don't eat it. And you just wait for it. You wait for it to drop from the tree. And so too is the case with your creations. You still focus on it. You still might go out and water the pomegranate tree, for example. You might be curious about it, see how it's coming along. You stay focused on it, but you don't have to push it because you can't. And a lot of times when you're on the intuitive pathway, when you're on the intuitive pathway, sometimes the best thing you can do is wait, wait for things to, to finish cooking, wait for things to finish ripening, wait for the bud to open up even if it's not exactly on your time. That's hard, it is hard. And it actually creates a welling up of emotion, of impatience, of frustration. Why isn't it ready yet? Why isn't it here yet? There's a season for everything. And I think that's the big message this week. There is a season for everything. Planting your seeds, watering them, watching them grow, being curious about them, tending them, pruning them as they begin to sprout and then anticipating with joy, with curiosity, when the fruit is going to start coming. 
I think this is going to carry us through the summer, actually, anticipating for when the harvest is coming. All right, so that's our that's our weather report for this week. I hope that that was helpful. I wanted to just give you a quick reminder. We are getting started with the McKay Academy of Actualization coming up in a couple of weeks. We are going to be opening the doors for enrollment later this week. So if you're not on the wait list yet where you get the earliest information about the Academy, get yourself on the wait list. You'll want to, you can go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash wait list. Put yourself on there. We'll send you the information as soon as it, it is ready to come out. And the Actualization Academy is something that has been really a long time coming. I've been developing these methods of actualization for about 22 years, ever since I started my own evolution, my own actualization process. And I have actualized so many amazing experiences and, and things and opportunities. And these are methods that I use with my private clients all the time in the Actualization Academy. I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes and teaching you the philosophy, teaching you the methodology that you can apply to yourself. There will be a certification as part of the Actualization Academy. So you can actually become certified in this methodology and use it with your own clients, with your own people that you're working with as well. So I'm very excited to share that with you. If that is something that you want to learn more about, again, just go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash wait list, and we will get you that information as soon as it becomes available. All right. I will see you guys next week for another edition of the weather report. And in the meantime, go out and create something, get in the energy of creation, just get in the energy of creation and, and see what happens. Ciao, ciao.